So let's begin with how Wilson attacked the tariffs. Congress passed the Underwood Tariff Act, which Wilson signed into law, which cut tariffs from 40% down to 25%. Hopefully at this point you remember what a tariff does or what it is. It is a tax on imported goods to protect American industry. So it's good for those who own the American industry, but bad for the people who now have to pay more money for all of the goods. The Underwood Tariff Act also created a graduated income tax. That term graduated means that wealthy people pay a higher percentage, um, something that we still have today. Percenting, per, depending on how much you make determines which tax bracket you fall in, and each bracket has a different percentage that they pay in income tax. During Wilson's presidency, the 16th Amendment was added to the Constitution. Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. So Congress has the power to collect an income tax from all of us. That is in the Constitution. Right, they can tax our incomes. Let's talk about how Wilson attacked the banks. Uh, whenever he became president, most banks were private organizations. Um, there was no upper bank that you know told all of these other banks what to do. They pretty much did their own business which meant that they were in control of how much money was in circulation. They were, all of these private regional banks were in charge of our nation's money supply. Wilson thought that that was bad for the people, gave too much power to these wealthy elite who could, you know, manipulate the money supply to achieve what was good for them. So in 1913, the Federal Reserve Act is passed, and this created the Federal Reserve. Hopefully a term that's familiar to you. The Federal Reserve Act re reorganized the federal banking system. It put the federal government in charge of the nation's money supply, and the idea was to make sure one person or one bank or one region of the country didn't become too powerful. So the Federal Reserve is still in charge of our nation's money supply today, often called the Fed. I want you to take a second right now to find out what exactly the Federal Reserve does. How much power does the Federal Reserve have? You can either pause here or come back and do that once the lesson is over. And finally, let's talk about how Wilson attacked the trust. In 1914, the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, is created, an organization that's still around. What the FTC does is monitor business practices, make sure businesses aren't, you know, doing sneaky little things that would help them create a monopoly or a trust. Um, <clears throat> so to make sure that businesses are maintaining fair um, practices, aren't taking advantage of people. In 1914, Congress also passed the Clayton Antitrust Act. This strengthened the previous Sherman Act that we are familiar with. Um, and the way that it made this stronger was by listing specific activities that a business could not do. So many businesses had started to find loopholes around the laws that allowed them to create these big businesses. Um, and the Clayton Act attempts to put an end to that. Um, so if you are a business and you do one of the things that one of the specific activities that the Clayton Antitrust Act says you can't, um, then you either have to change or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So that's how we continue to 
make sure that monopolies and trusts do not form. So throughout this unit, we've talked about several um, amendments to the Constitution. Three of these I hope that you can jot down right now off the top of your head. Um, the 16th, the 18th, and the 19th we've talked about in previous lessons. I'm going to take a second and tell you what the 17th Amendment did. If what I say is not clear, Google is your friend. Google the 17th Amendment. Um, the 17th Amendment changed the way that we elected senators in the United States. Um, so prior to the 17th Amendment, the two state senators were chosen by, no, the two senators from each state <clears throat> that represent us in Congress were elected by, chosen by the state legislatures. So the 17th Amendment makes it where the people elect the two senators from each state. So for the 17th, what you should write down is direct election of senators. 17th Amendment made it for the direct election of senators. People elect their senators. For the other amendments, go back through your notes. Um, you should have all of those written down, and you should know them really, really well. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. And that's all.